the Raelian Soul could perhaps come through. We'd definitely have to see the Syndra left through the bit, the pick ban, and uh, then snatched up by BBQ for that to happen. There are other matchups, but that seems like the most likely one. Maybe a blind pick Victor, you could see it as well, which it has been a couple of times this season. So Hope Springs Eternal for Sept to jump on his Aurelian Soul at some point. I know my fingers are crossed under the table. Bias Caster over here. So far, BBQ. Crazy has played Rumble a couple of times, but it's not a convincing Rumble player, so just going to ban it out against Helper. Not too shocking. Talia was banned out by Everade. And now we're over onto the red side. They banned Zack on blue last time around. Might have to expect that those could be the next two for Cossacks. their squad. And yeah, Cossix will be banned. So, I mean, jumped in priority as of late. The reason why you ban this on blue is you want to see how Everate is going to interact, because now it feels like the second round of jungles has already been hit. So does Everate take the wheels off with banning jungles? I feel like you have to ban Zac in that scenario because you have to be ready to consider banning Lee Sin or something like that. Jungle Paul is going to be emaciated by the end of this. They're already getting tightened up. The Graves is still there. We saw Beyond having some relative success with that in our first series. So it could be a decent fallback since that Kha'Zix is off the board, and yet again, the Caitlyn will be banned out here by BBQ. I feel like Everate can leave up Lee Sin just because Bless has looked pretty poor on it by LCK standards, and consider banning something else, and obviously they'll latch up Lee Sin if it's left available, because Malrung is a great Lee Sin player. So they will ban away the Syndra, so happy to leave Lee Sin open, but it also leaves open Galio, who I mentioned I'd uh, like to see. Okay. We will see Galio here, which could be a very expensive trade. Judging on how much success it's had recently, mid lane Galio has been the power pick, even though it fits Crazy's champion pool as well. I mean, ever eight, you could just take Ashley Sin right here. I just don't want Mulrung to go back to the Rengar. I don't want him to go back to the Rengar either. Jarvan Lee Sin is another possibility, but Mulrung on Lee Sin is uh, what we definitely love to see. All right, well, J4 is locked in. Could technically be out of the jungle. Sure, I mean, you could draft Olaf here, for example, as well. But Marong is one and two on that. Does work well against Galio Ash, if that's going to be the draft on the side of BBQ. Come on. The boy's right there on your screen. You Just get to pick for in, yourself, Marong. Lock in, Lisa. No! <laughs> All right. Well, Thresh gets locked in. This could just be a very early Tom Kench for BBQ. Yeah, given that Tom Kench has been picked so often as a blind pick. I mean, it wasn't great from Totoro there. and. Game number one, but could just do it again. But now he can be like, guys, it's the time. It's time for Tom Kench. I'm in a really good spot. Comeback has had a good Thresh game already this season. I believe he's only played the one has a victory on it. It's okay. We get a lot of information about what BBQ want to do. All right. Well, I wonder where the Galio is going. Well, if they lock in Braum, it's probably mid lane Achilles. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Somehow it's, a, it's one of those Galio jungles, which is possible, but not being seen at the competitive level yet. Okay. So Renekton's a good matchup into the Jarvan. He actually wins trades pretty heavily. So that part makes sense. So do you take Ash here for duel, or do you just try to lock down the Lee Sin? I feel like you look at the enemy and you're like, well, I'm never going to do damage for a lot of the potential laners. And I feel like Talia kind of falls there as well, given that so many people, all three people so far, will soak up the Q unless the snowball happens. So a bit surprising to see the Tilia draft in this spot. Can have some interesting matchups in the mid lane against Galio because you shove so fast, you might be able to move the minion wave and ruin the winds of wall placement. But that's such a micro win that surprised to see Tilia in that spot. And we're having this surreal season where Nidalee is banned way more times than she's picked. Yeah. Yet again. Taken off the board. So the jungle pool is going to be focused out even more. It is a blessed favorite. Does Lee, if Lee Sin somehow makes it through. I mean, Malron could take jungle job. Uh, that's still a chance here. That is true, yeah. That is a possibility. If they wanted to take Fiora for helper, then you could understand flexing the Jarvan to the jungle. And when you start banning away junglers, you know, only Lee Sin is really available of note of the jungle pool in Korea. Actually, with Olaf taken out as well. BBQ are maybe smelling a rat. Let's just ban all of the junglers. All right. Lee Sin's just hanging out. 
This is a surreal game. Maybe there's a code of honor now. No one can play Lee Sin. Uh, somehow I doubt that. If that is the case, then I would expect them to dishonor that right now. I don't see what you achieve by not banning Lee Sin against Mara. Because he is a great Lee Sin player. Ban the, ban the one and two all off instead. Ban the Graves that he doesn't even play as much anymore after the animation cancels are removed. So this is uh, surreal. He still won't choose his jungle. And we'll go for Callista here from Dior, who again skips past Ash. We're getting pretty surreal here. Now, I don't mind the Callista just because Ash will never do damage to BBQ. Could argue Callista won't either, but at two items, she at least will attempt to. No way. Probably not. Is this, I was going to say, like, this cannot be the point that we've hit. Gragas and Lee Sin, by far the power junglers available. BBQ will take the Gragas, and now you start wondering about what Marang might play from the jungle if it's not Lee Sin. Unless he's got something up, its, uh, up his sleeve. The thing about the... Lee Sin against BBQ is who are you kicking exactly? Whoever this last ADC pick is. <laughs> That's the only one. Urgot comes out, you're like, oh. Uh, crap. Well, well, that's who you'd be kicking. Quite difficult to get to. A ghost may be returning to the Twitch that didn't work in game one. Cluster can actually uh, leap away from the ultimate shots, given their skill shots during Spray and Pray. So we're waiting to see. Cluster Thresh, very dominant bot lane, but my struggles in the late game, and my god, Lee wow. Sin. He finally found someone to kick. After all that buildup, we just end up with the Lee Sin at the end. What a confusing draft. Well, it's an ultra pick comp for Ever8. Snowball comp from their side in the early game. They can make things happen before the super tank comes through and the Twitch damage is reliable or relevant. Ever8 will win pretty handily, but ultra late game, Twitch has four tanks to stand in front of him and six item Twitch does unbelievable damage. So, ABQ do have strong wave clear. They do have options in the late game and it feels like Ever8, it's not quite a hard timer, but it's pretty close to Kilios. I'm intrigued. I'm not sure how this one's going to go. Seems like BBQ have set themselves up rather well, as long as things don't go very poorly early on. If things go well early on, and you have Renekton with pressure onto the Jarvan, Bless invading with the Galio ultimate in his pocket, Twitch can do some fun things with the heroic entrance as well. It really feels like BBQ have a lot of tools after the first pick Galio, but Everett have a plan. Duel is jumping on the Callista, and they're going early game focus, and they have a lot of early game tools. I mean, he had an MVP performance there on the Ash. Can he have it on the Callista? It's going to be a lot more challenging mechanically here as he comes out. Does have that Thresh from Comeback to back him up? Let's see if that's going to be enough for them to close this out with a 2 0, or BBQ will put a win on the board. Let's jump back on to Summoner's Rift. the last game of the night. If ever he can close this out with a 2-0. Definitely had a lot to like about their draft in game one and play to the situation. This is a different one from ever eight. Very high pressure in the early game as Duel does a shout out to Bang who played in series one with SKT Callista. Accepted on the Talit. See how he does. Hasn't played this since the promotion tournament versus Kongdu Monster. So it's been a while, but I'm sure it's still well practiced from him. The wall plays will certainly be interesting here. A lot of permanent terrain between the Cataclysm and also the Weaver's Wall. I'm excited to see Duel kind of go hard carry mode because it's not the Ash Varus flavor. Callista's a lot more about dominance. The window in which you can Go play the Ruin King Hurricane and do well. It's probably going to be pretty narrow this game, given just how stupidly tanky the front line will be two items in. Yeah, probably not going to be great. And like you said, there's a lot to get on top of Duel with. Come into the front line with that explosive cask. 
Like didn't slice and dicing his way through. Is it SKT Callista? Maybe it's not. I want to say it is. I believe it is, but I did take a, it looked a good quite glance green, at it. So that doesn't seem correct by me. I think yeah, it that, is. No, that'll be it. Look at the look at the the wings on the ears. I guess the skin identity is not that important. Red buff start. The bless here. And one camp into his blue buff. Warded by the side. So everyone have great information about what camps he's going as. Level two is pretty painful for attempt, that's for sure. Yep. Yeah. They're just ripping right through him. This is shield now up from the passive. But it's only gonna mitigate so much. That the snowballing would lead to some headaches for Tempt because it's only one match damage threat on the side of Evere. So would rather not build for lane if he doesn't have to. We get to see Malrung on his undefeated lease in LCK level. Crazy's pushing in, trying to spot him out. We'll be able to throw the ward over the wall. Uh, Smite's available really for Malrung, so he's fine. Yeah, nobody there to capitalize. He doesn't know that. So he just goes ahead and uses the Smite just in case Bluster's combined. Now this top lane is going to unfold here for Helper. Very good performance on the Rumble. We saw Smeb win this matchup, but the way he did it was building damage and getting ganks in the early game. It feels like if you go for a respectful build, you can really get snowballed on by Arunectin. So fighting fire with fire may be necessary. Ward does spot out Marang, so probably not going to find the top lane gank he's looking for. He's going for the Scuttle Crab at the moment. Yeah, doesn't want to go ahead and rotate up towards that top side. Just scouting out this for half of the jungle. He's not going to find anything for trouble, so we'll just be going back. Not making the natural path into top and may have been told that a ward had gone down in the shallow brush. So we get a bit of a farm fest. Times like these, let us talk about other things, Kilios. Yeah. E3 week this week. What's E3? It's this uh, Electronic 3. It's when, oh, when oh. they announce games. Sorry, you mean the, the Skyrim convention? Well, it did feel a bit like that on some of these announcements. Minecraft also. Mostly Skyrim. Pretty much everybody had something to do with Skyrim. Looks like everyone has a dog in the race when it comes to E3. Someone, a lot of people with Sony, Microsoft, in the previous generation and with Windows. And then there's always the Nintendo fans as well. I just love... I was there last night hearing you squee about Metroid Prime. Oh, yes. I was I was so very excited. It was a bit awkward being in a bar at 1 a.m., having watching you guys watch the uh, announcements and multiple grown men losing their minds over Metroid being announced. Like literal fist bumps and shouts. There hadn't been that much alcohol consumed to kill you. I cheered. You did. I was in very, public. I was very happy. In was, public. You, you, were the old, you were the real example of an old There marriage. was two people that were not in our group in that bar, so I feel no shame. It's probably the right way to go. Oh, man, there's some exciting stuff. You know, now we got a uh, new Mario game where you can just, like, take over people's minds by throwing a hat on them. See, that part I thought was cool. I didn't cheer, but I thought it was cool. <laughs> I was just like, okay. Interesting. But I'll buy it. At the end of the day, that's what I'll go for. What what ticket your fancy, Papa Smithy? What caught your eye? I'm a Mario man as well, so definitely fun one. Taunt comes down. That's a lot of damage. Hooray for Kelly. Yep, it goes low, but uh, that's going to be about it. Just kite back and start chucking up on those potions. I'm an obscure one, but the, the last night was one they showed in the Microsoft stage yeah. coming out on Steam. That's... Uh, I love games like Flashback in the past, and that has a kind of retro 2D side scroll up mixed in with Blade Runner that kind of tickles my fancy. Those the guys that make uh, Hotline Miami. Ah, oh, same so, people. Yeah, same same developer. A little All bit less digital, death so. and murder. Yeah. Probably not that much less. Uh, I mean, yeah. We, we didn't really get a, a sense for how much death and murder there would be from the trailer, so. Uh, it could just be riddled with it. I don't know. The game tastes a bit more eclectic than most people. A lot of. Uh, Adventure games and story games these days. I don't like shooting people in the face as much as I used to. Oh, but I thought you were excited for the new Wolfenstein. I mean, that game just looks awesome <laughs> for many reasons. Top lane looks like it's going to be a party. Getting set up here. Except instead he's just going to walk in, gets just as punched in the face. Taunt comes down. He goes low. In danger of dying. Flashes over the wall. 
Back into the river, but he is in uh, no man's land at the moment. Oh! Throws out the Weaver's Wall, gets himself out to safety. And he can just delay this and get executed, perhaps. That if was not, just get the recall just off. Just the right amount of time. He's going to look for the back. Renekton's going to walk in. Remember, about five, four, three. All right, respects it. We'll just execute. Although, let's just try and buy as much time yeah. as possible. Pulls the minions. Wow. Which is actually not the worst idea. It's very well done. Yeah, pulling the minions means it's going to take longer for them to break. And theoretically, more likelihood to get back. Still, we'll probably lose a wave. But interesting end to what was a chase coming through. It was really close to that Q connecting. Ball wrong, gonna spot Bless. Does he want to go in for the fight? The answer's gonna be yes. Gets the Dragon's Rage in. Goes forward, but now the hero's entrance coming through, and Ball wrong has to dash away. Takes a dark passage out to safety so he doesn't get popped up. That's a big cooldown, baited out just for the kick. It's great trade if you think about it, even with the lace in nerfs. He will have that up way before Tempt is able to get access to the heroic entrance or the hero's entrance again. I mean, look at this. Accepted. Not going to really be behind at all as far as he is concerned. Half a second away from wasting his ultimate, but definitely became a, came out as a winner in that particular escape. He was almost certain to go down one way or the other. It was very well done. Meanwhile, bottom lane, just kind of everybody hanging out. Bilgewater Cutlass completed here for duel. Expect the same from Ghost. As he's got a similar CS score going on. I guess that's redundant, CS. A CS creep score? Yeah. Rip and piece? Yeah, rip and piece. I think Helper probably has to go full damage here because he is someone who can jump onto the Twitch and potentially delete Twitch. Standard build won't delete him instantly, but they're going to probably be throwing people at Twitch left, right, and center. Can launch also with the Callista ultimate, the Fates Call, the Thresh to... Flay him once and then probably die in the AoE. Such is the life of Thresh in the late game. I mean, it's going to be a lot of extra pressure here on Septa to get the seismic shove. So we can do that. Q used. Here, but okay, here we go. Surprise. Cataclysm comes down. Helper just going to flash out with the stun for the team. Because blows comes through and crazy. He's here to cut him off. Lagan drags up the wall, but it's going to be a flash body slam from Bless. Yeah, waiting this for the down. Q there was... Uh, Totoro in the brush, opened up onto him. Another lane swap happening in this game. So happening more frequently as teams swapping out of 2v2 lanes and looking to force the Rift Herald. Increasing the pace of the game when you have a tank comp like this that fights best in the early to mid game is a cool thing. And this is a trend we're starting to see. It's the first time we've seen it pre-10 minutes. In 12 minutes, inching earlier and earlier. Yeah. We see it at eight minutes in this game. Picking up the secondary objective is really important part of this puzzle. It'll be a bit of a close one, but it seems like Ever-8 do have it. Take that down, they get the first brick. BBQ a couple seconds off. Now the laning phase is a bit comfortable for Twitch and Braum, so this is not just to dodge the Eclista Thresh lane that has a lot of respect. This is more about getting bonus objectives in again, specifically about the Rift Herald. They'll at least get Vision advanced to think about setting up for the Rift Herald, but you can see the recalls are very fast from Everett. They're not interested in trading potentially a uh, Cloud Drake for the Rift Herald. Best trade ever. Okay, great list. Monstrously high this season. As anticipated. Give the changes. I, I definitely. I mentioned it on Twitter, you know, I was kind of a madman about what it could mean about the meta, and it's only now that we're starting to see more and more teams visit the Rift Herald, as right now there's no information for BBQ that it's being taken. Well, well wrong. He walked pretty close to the I think opening by, I, here. I think he might have juked into it when he was trying to play around with the Rift Herald, but he's, it's unclear. Yeah, he's cheating around it. There's no pings coming down, so I actually think that he is uh, successfully sneaking this one away. Speaking of sneaking, goes coming forward, Glacial Fisher comes down, does lock up Duel, but he's got the Dark Passage. Take himself out to safety. Maul wrong. Still just like, shh, don't say anything. They have no idea that I'm here. I'm just going to finish this off. So does get it while surrounded by the entire enemy team. Hook comes through over the wall. Hero's entrance as they try to get in on top of Duel. Will be able to do so. Brawl's in the Fates call. Come back. Just be dying alongside. They're going to instantly into mid lane. Draws the teleport from Tempt, I believe. That yeah, will be coming through. And probably won't be getting much for this Rift Herald. Most of mid lane turret. It was against the flow of the play as well. They kind of snuck the Rift Herald. You know, look at bottom lane. Is it worth two deaths? Probably not, but I guess it depends on how much work they get done bottom lane. 
very interesting how they kept on the Rift. It shows the priority on the objective that they would take it and give up their entire bot lane to pick it up. Well, I'm just trying to take away some of these tiny raptors. Smites there from Bless. Does claim that for himself, and yeah, not much damage onto that tier two turret is box, so Helper doesn't get much done. They gave up one member. If Callista could have gotten out, I think that was still a success. Oh, Cataclysm down. Crazy's already used a slice and dice as they go forward. Seems like he's going to be dead. Balrog picks up the kill. Except they're to back him up just in case. They will return to pushing this bot lane as well. Nice extra kill picked up by the side of Everett. BBQ trying to get things together. Septon was there to provide pressure. Speaking of pressure. Come back going low as Bless finds him. Pops that explosive cask and he gets the hook in onto Totoro as he leaps forward. But already it's going to be Bless time. going down. Which firing off finds the kill onto Malrong. Several members low. The double kill as Septon goes down. BBQ still chasing in. A couple more hits on the comeback. Flash forward the Q from Totoro. Almost takes him out. Flash over the wall for comeback. Should take him out to safety by the look of things. Nothing Ooh. clips him. Two skill shots miss. Would have been a three for two. Ends up just being the two for two. Yeah, that was really close. He got both flashes away uh, because of that. But now some pressure opened up on this mid turret. As Temp just starts punching away at him. We're gonna replay though. And the big thing here for the side of BBQ is where the kills go, because look at where Twitch is able to open up with no threat on him. Big four-man taunt. And Ghost gets to open up over the wall. Ends up 3-0 and 2, picking up a lot from this fight. And Duel picked up free farm, so on the face of it, it could have been win to duel if the kills didn't go to the ideal members of BBQ. So Ghost picking up all the gold in his tank line. Approaching unkillability manages to BBQ along with the 1700 gold. Link. I mean, 3 0 and 2 right now on the Twitch, so night and day compared to game one here for Ghost. Couldn't get much worse. That's true. And Ever8, we talked about them being early to mid, mid game focused with just how sturdy the front line will be for BBQ, and they haven't really been able to get it done in the early to mid game. Scepted has been looking for the roams, but largely been caught making in transition, which, given the comp from BBQ, is understandable. And Duel has just kind of avoided fights, picking up that free farm in the top lane during the previous engagement. But I don't know if necessarily the reward for doing that is akin to, say, Crown on Victor picking up free farm in top lane, or Faker on the Cassio. Something pushing forward. That's going to be the opening up here. They flash in with the body slam yet again, lock him down, and he just gets deleted. Well, I think Scepted, if he walks past a bounce castle tomorrow, is going to shudder in fear and remember what happened in game two every time he sees a Gragas. He gets a unsolicited ride on the bounce castle. No fun. Dies instantly. Three deaths already in 14 minutes. KDA keeps rolling down. This is uh, looking very poor for Ever8, but very good for BBQ. Executing well. Good rotations around the map so far. About a 2,000 gold lead. They'll go ahead and pick up another objective with this Cloud Drake. Roll the dice and see what we get next. Pounding on the bot lane turret at the same time. Neither member going to be taking either of those objectives fast. And all, again, Everate can say is we took away the Rift Herald for two kills and Duel has free farmed. Otherwise, things have gone very much just to the side of Everate winners. Surprised that Temp spent so much of his early game gold Building the adaptive helm. Get the kick back in. He takes no damage from the Q, but apart from that, feels like he could have built for the other four threats on the side of Ever8. Not sure if it was necessary to build magic resist when his opponent is zero and three. Better safe than sorry, I guess. I, don't know. I would argue that a Spectre's Cowl is probably safe enough at this point. Yeah, tier 1 does go down to the bottom lane. Now Hero's entrance coming through from the Dark Passage. Takes Ball wrong to safety. Slice and dice forward. As Crazy tries to find the stun, won't be able to do so. But he does get a flash. So as BBQ wants to back away, so... No harm, no foul in that regard, even if they didn't trade up in the maximum way possible. And Duel not having flash after free farming is still a pretty big win for the side of BBQ. Just trying to play the map. They're trying to extend the game and go into side lanes, but again, not necessarily a draft that can be unlocked with that sort of playstyle unless they find some creative way to take down the Twitch. So far, has not happened. Haven't even come close. Leah could have represented Oriana, who 
wouldn't necessarily have repaired the draft from Ever-8, but Talia feel, felt like it was almost a exclamation point on either early game or pretty big suffering in the mid to late game. Waiting for Ghost to start opening up close to two items, or either Zeal completed. Waiting for Duel to actually go aggressive. So far again, mostly been a split pusher this game. Still very well farmed. Calista, but a ways away from becoming ultra powerful. Come back and get the engage oh, yeah. off. The Weaver's Wall comes down. Yeah, something. Trying to lock them in. But now the wall goes down. Glacial Fisher comes out. Helper takes a very long ride out. Just as much forward. Finds Septon. Does he have the taunt ready to go? There's going to be no. Temp goes low. Has to flash away. Respecting the damage from that Ren that can come out with a couple more hits. Doesn't want, do, does not want to die. Marang has ultimate available. Looking for the kick onto Ghost, but Septid has to recall. Already very, very low. Yeah, there should just be farm and recall for the rest of the squad. Yeah, Malrong is going to try to get himself out. Doesn't want to walk around for fear of being spotted by a ward, but just cancel. Get up in terms of flashes. Did Everate, two used by the side of BBQ, is something. Galio's being down means the engage threat is lower. Really playing with fire right now. Malrong really wants this kill on Twitch. He's waiting for the wave to push back in. It's pretty Can't trying to find the open. Fate's call here as well, remember? And he's just like, all right, well, I'll just get these wolves. I could have killed forever ago. We'll be spotted on control one. It's spotted there. Yeah. Wasn't in the vision for just a moment. Just gets clipped. It's an overinvestment, you would say? Yeah, just about. Reminds me of. Levi at MSI making similar plays when his team was behind. Didn't work for them in that game. Comebacks always just a half a second off on all of these hooks that he's throwing today. Again, scrim culture in Korea seems to have been deprioritizing Thresh, our first Thresh of the day with all the SKT highly prioritizing Tom Kent just as a blocker pick into Thresh and then it being overlooked. There is definitely picks, you know. A lot of regions look to Korea for inspiration when it comes to what to play, and I'm sure Thresh was one of those picks earlier in the season. But sometimes we just have picks because people are feeling it. You know, we had a bit of Locksmith at a time when that didn't necessarily become a worldwide trend. Some of them go on to be bangers, don't get me wrong. Some yeah. of them become meta shaping, but sometimes people are just really feeling certain picks and scrims in a week. Rush have as obvious reasons why he was important, but right now it does feel like people are enjoying the Tom Kent side of things. Accepted yet again, very far forward. Has to be worried about the temp with the taunt. Flashes away from it. A lot of respect being shown. Didn't have any advanced vision, so could have definitely been multiple people lying in wait. And even if it was Bless on the Gragas, he probably would have died. So felt like he had enough pressure on him. Comeback's going to find some extra gold, so he'll be pretty hyped about that. Well, very rough spot right now for Septon. For Ever8 as a whole, but you can see he's trying to build up for the Void Staff so he can just start finally chipping away at Tempt. But even then, well, that dream's not a lot of AP to back him up. So Playing front to back for Ever8 looks so hard now. The item's starting to come in. Look at this. Already double Warden's Mail. Trip. Sorry, five Ninja Tabis are complete, which were slightly nerfed, but definitely not enough to take them out. You don't often see five of the same type of boots on a yeah. team, but they know what's going on. Scepter, I mean, when Scepter's zero three one, why do you need magic? Well, this is uh, this is bold. Oh, doesn't let find the hook, and I'll come back in a bad spot. Body slam comes through, drops the box, and we'll have to get dragged out of there by the Fate's call. So, a bit wanting there with that play in on to Temp. Item efficiency is low as well with a gold disadvantage. So, BBQ is probably going to take a pretty big mistake for them to not power through this mid game. Go ahead, knock down that tier one turret. All of the outers now falling. Just 22 minutes in, and BBQ main, they maintain this pace where it looks like they'll be able to close out this game. Sounds like a lot of inevitability for 
a 4,000 gold lead at 21 minutes, but given how we've talked about these comms, Twitch is free farmed and also fed 100% kill participation on Ghost. We're gonna need a curveball, and that seems to represent Baron. Okay. Braum's already there. And there's a warden. Yeah. So there you have it. All right. <clears throat> well, we tried. I, I like the idea from Ever8, but was well found out by okay. the side of BBQ, who... They're giving up a lot of priority in the mid lane right now as well. And BBQ were only turning off. off a Ocean Drake as well, so... They were happy to back away, and they can return to that at any point. Renekton pushing in. The lane focus of BBQ. Apart from the bot lane that went better than expected from Ghost, who was actually ahead in CS during regular laning phase. May have fallen behind a little bit now. Everything went better than expected for the 10th place team, and now we kind of readjust ourselves for what is looking like it's going to be a three-game series. I mean, that was the expectation coming into this one. Yes. So it's not very shocking if that's going to be the case. Emory played very well in game one. I like their draft as well, but I feel like the draft kind of started this game on the wrong note, and then the play kind of compounded that. You look like Everate after some of their matches, Achilles. Yep. That's about how I feel. But, you know, it's fine. As anticipated is uh, where this is likely to go. I mean, there is there is an outside chance that Everate could swing their way back in, but what that victory looks like, I do not know. The what ifs here, as you say, are a little bit more remote than other series because it would take some big positioning setup mistakes from BBQ to be kind of caught out in transition. Twitch, for some reason, granting his life over first, you could understand Everett winning. Or other really big headaches. Is maybe this will be a headache. Crazy going to go ahead and get knocked up. Flashes away. Cataclysm comes down. He is still alive. Flash kick. Just to finally well, take him down, the Dragon Strike will find the hit. Attempt arriving off the backside of the teleport. Trying to turn things around in the meantime. Duel and come back, both getting jumped on, but they make it out safely. There's a one for zero. Man, Sept is really good at ulting out of just, danger. Yeah, he is just down to the wire with these ults. Barely keeps himself out of there. Helper happy to walk up. Has EQ available, so. I mean, they got a pick. Yeah. But it took three members. And they can't get anything for it. Except they have the TP away from Tempt, I suppose. They can start pushing up mid lane, maybe get a couple of hits in, but... When you're this far behind in pressure and tempo, even just clearing some control wards is, is a win. Doesn't feel like a super win, but... Just with where the game is and the control wards will stay up. Ever right back away. Well, Duel did go for that hurricane. All he wishes that he had a last whisper right about now. Hook comes out here from the comeback, trying to lock in onto Ghost. Knocks Duel out of the fight, but he'll get back comes, in. The box comes down, and that's going to be the TP from Crazy, who does cancel it right off the bat. Well, now they have a TP badge. There's something for the side of Ever8. Hell yeah. I mean, it was literally nothing a couple of moments ago. Something is more than nothing. Imagine that BBQ will just go back to pushing every lane. Get more and more free farm onto the Twitch, who... Feels like he's closing in on Double Zeal and Infinity Edge pretty soon. Slow and steady as she goes. Ocean Drake not coming up for a couple minutes. So nothing really there for Everage. Just trying to clear out that vision while they have some priority over the river. But you can see Crazy just starts cheating up and Wallrong immediately goes ahead and backs off. I wonder where Septid will go with his itemization from here. Leon just makes a lot of sense against the team he's facing. He's been a big favorite of Crown. Going for second item Leandris or Saucer's Shoes, haunting guys into Leandris. Wanted to do something against Tempt in a side lane, so felt forced to go into Void Staff, but I saw a little other magic resist. He's not getting a lot of value out of magic penetration outside oh, of that. That's going to be the opener there, yep. Yeah. Knocked back from the cast. He's going to die, and Ghost finds the kill. 4-0-3 now on that Twitch. The Bouncy Castle engages are working for them. So yeah, ultimate use to slow down the start of Baron. That's fun. <laughs> All right. Trying to halt this as best as possible. Body Slam and Slice and Dice will take them over the wall. And they will start this up. Malrong 
their hopes in this game basically come down to a miraculous steal. Already uses the Dragon's Rage. That's going to be early teleport. DP straight into the pit from Helper. Drops in, immediate taunt comes through. He goes down. Septon now exhausted on the front side of the pit, trying to kite back as best as possible. Will get popped up by the Glacial Fisher. Flashes away from Ghost to try to keep himself alive. Does a good job of whittling away at this Twitch. Almost dies, drops down to 4 HP. And now it's back over onto the Baron. Taunt coming through from Marong, makes it into pit. Can he find the seal? Hero's entrance coming down. He takes it away with a smite. Gets taken out right off the back of that one by Ghost, who should find a second kill. On to come back, the near ace. Uh, Septon barely made it out. But they get the Baron, they get some gold, and they keep their hopes alive yep. for a bit longer. BBQ was so greedy at keeping the Baron leashed. They decided that turning around for picks was not enough, that they needed the Baron in the same play. But one of the picks was not onto Malrang. So this is a really early teleport I mean, from Jarvis. Bodied. As expected, he can't even cast Cataclysm for damage. Septa does a lot of work, kiting back on non-worked ground. DPS is down a lot of the members. But at 4,000 health, they choose to re-engage with nothing put into Malrang. And Crazy jumps over, he thinks he'll interrupt him, but they don't have enough damage to burn as they're targeting down Malrang. And just walks in, does a Lee Sin thing, gets the steal, which Lee Sin will always have the advantage over Gragas in that scenario. Really questionable stuff coming up from BBQ. They didn't need to get everything at the same time. They were so far ahead. They're getting a couple of picks, backing up, getting items, and trying that again. Every time they tried to fight around Baron, they have an advantage. Just now ever eh? Yeah, so Weaver's wall coming through. TP will be burned out here by Gracie as he tries to join in the fight, but Ghost is already getting ready to go down. He finishes off Septon in time. His comeback claims the kill, but Totoro will fall. Duel putting one on the board. And already, just like that, ever eight. Feeling reinvigorated off the backside of that Baron. They'll be pushing down the mid lane. Yeah, we talk about what had to happen, and that time there wasn't a front line in front of Ghost. It was only Totoro. So he didn't have the four tanks he expected. Speaking of tanks. Dominus is coming through Hero's entrance as well as come back. And Helper will both get popped up. Takes a flag and drag over the wall, but they're dangerously low as the taunt comes in. Tempt, dragging him all still in. Alive. The Guts is coming through the hook there just to try to delay as Duel kites back as fast as possible. Damage. He almost goes down, but barely stays alive. Can't go back in. Just way too risky to try to finish off Bless. And just like that, BBQ turn it around. A lot of spears in Temp did a surprising amount of damage. I thought Helper died. I'm surprised to see that he's alive somewhere. Yeah, he just engaged and got <laughs> out. That's the Jarvan way. We see Jarvan live a lot today. They'll continue here. Things are going better than expected with Ever8. Callista got a lot of time, and now Callista's hit her three-item spike. She probably will not get stronger than finishing up Lord Dominic's regard. That's getting crazy value in this game. It will be Leandri from Scepted as well. Will these little tools be enough? Because if they can continue to get the drop on Ghost, which should be impossible in a regular situation, but maybe possible while the Flash and Heal are down on Ghost, who knows? Maybe against all logic, Everett can win this game. They still have one Baron buff. Almost expired, though. It doesn't seem like they're going to be able to get into a position to take out that final outer turret in the top lane. They'll start rotating that way. Meantime, second Ocean Drake goes over to BBQ. Three stacks set up for that Elder Dragon if they can claim it. The perfect fight for Ever8, apart from just somehow Ghost dying instantly, is Jarvan buying a lot of time by just getting the Cataclysm onto the Twitch. He has the Gargoyle Stone Plate, so he takes a long time to die. And if he's eating the whole spray and pray, that is a mini win for the side of Ever8. So there is still Gargoyle Stone Plate coming into the game, which does artificially waste the time of an AD carry more than other recent itemization. Gogo Stone Plate plus a Randowans would at least waste a lot of time. Bissell Mask picked up by Gragas. Same as Bissell Scepter that you guys would have seen from the LCK last week, but with the tweaks to show that, hey, it's not the item used to rush on Ari anymore. Feels bad. But now you got Rylize. Mm. Maybe not as a rush, but you know. Mm. Or not Rylize, uh, Banshee'sville is what I was thinking of. So for some reason, I went to Rylize. I'm not sure what's going on. My brain is melting from this game. It's a BBQ thing. Yeah. You just want some fried chicken. Maybe that's actually the prize that BBQ gets at the end of this. Not that they get fried chicken, but they get to eat something that's not fried chicken. It's possible. <laughs> Thank God. Beef. Their fried chicken butt's probably quite, quite large. We can have steak again. I just want some vegetables. <laughs> Broccoli sounds delightful. All right, Callista has the QSS as well. 
Can we see Heroic some duel? Looks like the fight shouldn't exist in a way that that happens, but... Ghost Flash is down for the 20 seconds. Duel getting pinched on. Dark Passage already there, but now maybe this turret under threat. There's two members of Emirate on down on the bottom side, yeah. But the minion wave's so far away from top lane here that BBQ will not get punished for parking two in the bot lane. Feels like it should be impossible for the 6-1-4 Twitch to not be able to carry this one through for BBQ. Yeah, he's pretty uh, he's pretty fed. He's decked out, I would say. Yeah. Working on a Bloodthirster, it seems, is the next item. It could be Guardian Angel as well. Maybe Guardian Angel is more likely. A lot of AD threats on the side of Ever-8, and they passive I mean, to like, potentially start going again. Like you said, basically the win condition for a team fight for Ever-8 is immediately delete the Twitch, so Guardian Angel would certainly help against that. Immediately delete the Twitch and have dual free hit for 30 seconds. <laughs> the Randuins haven't come out yet, so they're probably coming at some point. A little bit less value because it's a more of a anti-crit item now, and Critical Strike is a minimal part of Callista's kit. <laughs> oh, Ghost. How fast can he pop again, to find out? Oh, dark Passage. So come, Comeback just has to say glued to him this entire time. Which, you know, he probably would have anyway, but I think if he opened up and triple crit him, he might have killed him instantly. <laughs> it would have been close. He would have been very low. He also pop the ult to get a hit or two during the lantern animation. That'd be the worst, just die in the middle of that. We had someone die in the middle of... Magical journey, yeah. It happens. It's a depressing journey. It's a bad trip, if you know what I mean. Well, everything is halted. Baron's coming up in 20 seconds. The Vision War is at the moment being completely dominated by BBQ. I mean, look at that top side jungle. But what are they doing with the information, Achilles? Because we haven't seen a heroic entrance in a long while. They, I don't have, know. they have ghosts going for very low percentage catches onto a Callista Thresh duo. They're setting up for another Baron that Malron can steal. You know? That is a playbook that's open to many teams. MVP would like a word with them. It feels like a better team would have ended this game already. But BBQ do not represent that better team as the 10th place team in Korea. So they keep inching forward, but they're not even taking micro leads. They're just kind of putting down wards and then walking around. Yeah. Gone are the flash all-in attempts as the likes of Scepted and Duel are being a lot more defensive. Oh, they're going to have to kite back yet again. Oh no, the Ghost is here, pitching in on him. Glacial Fisher comes down, come back, trying to stay alive. The Fates Call will drag him out. Hero's entrance comes through here from Tempt. Cut off the wrong side of the wall, but who? Uh, probably Ever-8 at the moment. All wrong coming in from the back side. Doesn't find the kick he wanted. Yeah, doesn't find it at all. Has to go ahead and peel back immediately. And Crazy's getting ready to join in the fight. Help is Close here. Pass comes through, knocks Helper in towards the Twitch, taking the damage, and now Malrong getting jumped on. Stun comes down from Crazy as he tries to kite back. Malrong dashing forward yet again, just keeping himself alive. So has the Guardian Angel come back, goes in, lands the hook. Totoro goes down, dual finds the first kill. Could this be the fight that blows over the game for Ever-8? The kills have come through, Ghost is down, a near ace. As Tempt and Crazy try to limp out of here, they will find one on to Septid. But a double kill comes through from the Callista, and Crazy is sent Head and running for the hills. Have a rate, they want the kill, they want it completed, but they could just go ahead and settle for a Baron. So many spears into Tempt actually energized Hachani or come back to flash in and make the play. Everyone was grouped up and they got so much value out of the Callista who is doing the hard carry job that we just didn't think she could be. They turn onto the Baron, it will be free for the side of Everate and Achilles, we actually have a game on our hands. We really do. Watch the replay here. It looked like the fight had ended. Helper botched this pretty hard. His flag placement is in no man's land. His EQ onto nothing. And you think, okay, Ghost is going to free hit. But remember, a spray and pray is down here. And as Twitch walks up for auto attacks, comeback makes the big play. He's like, any hook is golden. Goes straight into the team. And Ghost in the backside gets deleted by all people. Helper, who actually finds the angle this time. So the first one was clearly a bait. 
with his failed EQ. The second one much better. Free hitting from Duel, who does have the Lord Dominic's regard. And against all expectation, oh in narrow corridors where they can't kite back, the Twitch dies. Now they're turning on to Elder Dragon. Do they want to stick in on this one? Dark Passage is thrown down. Elder Dragon does get disengaged at least for the moment, but they Go keep on it now. Weaver's Wall has come they through. Got, Everybody the over the wall. Yes, yeah, they're just going to have to let this one go. So now Baron buff Elder Dragon over to Everink. They don't have any stacks. But now this opens them up to finally get these objectives. It's only been two turrets from them this entire time. Granted, three from BBQ. But they're the ones that have had the lead for the longest time, and now that's turning on its head. And Duel is looking for that hard carry double MVP game. Massive minion wave. I mean, in the top lane, going to be answered by Ghost, who doesn't have flash. They're in the bottom side of the map, yeah. He doesn't have teleport, doesn't have flash either, so maybe they want to avoid a fight, but they're going to see more than just an inner turret, Achilles. Ghost is still. Five, six seconds away from getting here. Here we oh, go. Oh, going in, gets the kick back in on the crazy. Popped up immediately. The Dominus, not enough to keep him alive. Accepted, finds the kill. Just firing away with the threaded volleys, continuously chipping away at the remaining members of BBQ. But one of the frontline members has gone down. They don't know Accepted where Twitch bless. is. They're showing a lot of respect. Twitch shows himself. They can move up now. Yeah, he pops right back out, but they're out of minions. So they will kite back. Hook comes through in on the temps. Seismic shove as well. Has to just his punch his way out to safety. And he's going to be going back to the fountain now with the minions crashing through. That's going to be an inhibitor getting exposed. All right, here they, do. they finally turn onto it. Inhibitor will go down as well. 29 seconds on the Renekton. They'll probably back away. This has been an insane passage of play for Ever8 winners. And a 2-0 that honestly should have been impossible with the control BBQ had, the comp they had, the wards they had. They had everything set up to win the mid to late game. And now, a couple of mistakes later, it's looking tricky. Well, I got to say, I'm, uh, I'm awake now, Bob Smithy. I was, uh, getting ready to, off there. was getting ready to nod off for a little bit, but last couple fights here from Ever Aid. I mean, we're in the Korea. The heroics are just... And I'm not trying to talk up my region for any reason other than games here are usually pretty patterned. You look at the team, you look at where the game's at, and you're like, well, I can skip this one. Or you can jump between Drake's and be like, well, there's not going to be any action or any mistakes there. But when it's 10th versus 7th, the high expectations for the best of the LCK are less founded. BBQ did a lot of smart things in the early game. They got the right person fed, they got the right wards, but they just didn't look like they knew how to win. And sometimes when a team is way behind and they're just rolling over and dying, you're like, this team doesn't know how to win. And sometimes they're way ahead and show that they don't know how to win either. And thus, we're in this weird spot where you know, top turret is still up and top lane, because. The game had been so narrow for Everay. They really had been dictated to. They couldn't get anywhere. They didn't have vision control anywhere. Now the game's opening up. There's more standing gold. There's a gold lead for Everay. And yet, you can't help but think that there's still a team fight that BBQ wins in the game from there. Oh, for sure. It's so close. I mean, six items getting ready to come through for multiple players. So the likelihood of either team closing this out. Ghost will Decisively have his, is very small. Ghost will have his flash for the next fight, but so will Septed. Duel still didn't use any summoners in the, in the recent time. Yeah, he's been safe. Just being attached to the hip to Hachani is, or to come back has really helped him out quite a bit. All wrong. A little saucy goes in. Doesn't do a damn thing to Temp's HP bar, though. And you can argue that, you know, we were focusing on, well, Ever8 don't really have the best ways to get to the th to the Twitch. And that's still true in a open area, but when you're fighting in the enemy jungle, we saw there are ways to get there. But you could say the same thing about Duel. Now, Twitch is heavily favored in the late game for damage because it's usually so instant and so piercing with the spray and pray. There's no bra Braum on the enemy team to shut down that damage. So we're still waiting for that fight where you get six to eight autos off and two-thirds of the health bars of basically everyone on Ever8 disappear. But we haven't gotten them so far, and instead it's been the skipping game for Duel, who is looking for that double MVP performance on the Callista and is short of an item completion. So probably about, what, 800 gold away from six items himself. Dangerous territory for both of these teams at the moment. Baron still... A little ways off, and that Elder Dragon buff has since expired. So that power, that rush of adrenaline that Ever8 had has been slowed down a bit. Double Guardian Angel for Ever8. That's their divers, so Lee Sin and Jarvan. One is completed onto Ghost as well. 
But what is Callista doing while the res of the Guardian Angel is coming through? Arguably taking out the tanks and then Twitch may be exposed. So understand the thought process of going for the Guardian Angel. But it might not be enough to save BBQ. Seen some very good hooks from Comeback to help set up these final kills, these closeouts. Teamfight Thresh memory. is super hard. You know, I've talked to Gorilla about the increased Thresh in Korea, and he's like, yep, Thresh super good in lane, all the changes to Doran Shield, etc. But late game Thresh, you know, can be a burden on his team. So often, you hit a hook, you hit on the right person, you go in, instantly die, whatever tank items you build. So actually being able to make it work so that your Q is on the right target, so the engage that you choose is the one that your team can win, is a lot more about knowledge than necessarily the mad life hook predictions that we got in previous seasons, and so far, Comeback is on the right side of the coin here. So far, the fights he's engaged have been the right ones for Ever8, and I didn't think that that many existed given how the comps looked, so full credit to him. So far, it's been a very good pick for Ever8. Yeah, it was very slow at the start, but has really turned up the pace here. He's not allowed to play Tom Kench and anymore after his last Abyssal Voyages. Yeah. I mean, Totoro as well, you should you could say. <laughs> probably shouldn't be allowed either. If your name's not Wolf or Gorilla, then maybe don't play Tom Kench. Six items onto both AD carries. First one to go down. Team probably loses. Yeah. No Baron's up. Control Ward will be cleared out. Wrong sitting forward. Javan has to actually walk behind the ward to clear it. Doesn't want to engage the Baron. Wrong. Gonna just jump over. Baron fires away a couple shots, but neither team in a position to go for this. Huge minion wave pushing in, but was slow pushed by Ever8, forces the Renekton to react. That means that Ever8 can move forward. Weaver's Wall is coming through. They're looking for the cutoff. They're not going to find it, though. And that could have been used to, you know, potentially cut them off as they go for the Baron. Welcome to plants in over on the Blast. Chani goes over the wall, has to be Fates called out right off the bat. Self safe. They do get the TP out of Crazy. He'll have to run up now, so no longer is that backline threat. Duel was very situationally aware. And that just draw Crazy back. They see Crazy in the bot lane, stopping the inhibitor from going down. Wave's crashing now, so he's got a bit more freedom and wasn't a whole lot of damage taken on that inhibitor from the super creeps that were there. Look at the back will come through from Duel and come back. So tools down after that fight. Big ones to mention are the flash onto Bless in particular. Does mean that both Scepted and Duel are safer in team fights from the cask engage. Ultimates are down too, but this late in the game, gonna be a very short cooldown. Now everything all falls down to this Baron. And the fight that will almost certainly ensue. They go in, they're clearing out. At the moment, not going for the engage. Body slam over the wall, actually, as I say that. Those come through. Hero's entrance, Fate's call. We'll drag come back away from that. A lot of abilities to bait the hero the hero's entrance, like for example, the cholesterol. Now both AD carries looking very, very sturdy in team fights with so many tools for engage down. BBQ desperately want to fight in the open where they can have Twitch position. It's safer all they can get a catch. Knock him over into the wall. Concussive blows will come through, and Malrong has a Guardian Angel, but it's going to get popped. Can he make it out of here? Alive is going to be the question. Throws down that Dark Passage over the wall, but he just dashes it. Still can't get to it, but now the comes through in onto Bless. Yeah, they're trying to finish him off, and they're able to do so. Duel finds the kill as the rest of BBQ wraps around the backhand side. Totoro has to flash over that Weaver's wall to get himself up here with the team to offer up these stuns from the passive, but instead he might just be paying for this one with his life. Rend doesn't quite finish him off, and Helper barely stays still up. Alive. Last couple hits come through, and he still has a Guardian Angel. No one else goes down so far, still just the one for one. You get the Guardian Angel from Helper, dies to the poison. And right out of Duel, position. Though, he's walking forward. This is going to be such a bad spot for him to be in. The hook comes through from Comeback as Duel tries to kite back to keep himself alive. So he is Except here as well. Now, joining in the fight, Comeback flashing over the wall. Justice one forward here from Temp, who's still rather healthy. But here comes Helper, full HP on that Jarvan. The hook comes down, gets knocked back in, and he'll get taken out, finds the kill. Does Duel, but he will be able to finish off Comeback at the he's same hunting. exact time. And now Ghost, yeah, looking for this Kalista. Can blow him up if he opens up with it. 
will be able to do so. Flash forward comes in from Totoro, and that's just going to be a double kill over to Ghost, a near ace, as it's just Helper and Malrong alive. Insane extended fight because of so many tanks on both sides. Relatively low damage on the Talia. Maybe you want to end the game now. Long death timers on both Duel and Scepter. Yeah, 50 seconds still come back. Going to be up in about 25. But Ghost is here to rip through these turrets. And there's really not much that Mulrong and Helper can do. Let's see how they want to approach this one. All down to this last Hail Mary defense from these guys. No Guardian Angels on either of them. Argos Stone Plate almost back up. Kick comes through. Knocking back crazy as they go forward, but Helper goes down. Malrong goes down. The ace is completed, and BBQ will close out game two. They will extend this series. Ended up being just a single fight, so credit to Everett for fighting back after it looked like BBQ would be the inevitable winners. Finally find the fight where Ghost can make the difference. They'll end the game here, and we're going to game three, Achilles. Tenth versus seventh. Two games cannot split these two teams. 10 p.m. just about on the clock. We're going late here tonight, Papa Smithy. BBQ are able to close it out despite the massive turnaround from Everett in the mid game. Sticking the landing is really all you can say about BBQ. It should have been cleaner, should have been earlier, but the team that would have done it cleaner than earlier are probably not the team perched at the bottom of the table. So very little to split these two teams. Wasn't a big fan of the draft coming through from Everate in game two. So narrow with its effectiveness, even with the sick out plays, they just didn't have the right weapon for the fight. They still didn't have the knife for the gun fight. They didn't have the gun for the knife fight, whatever one I'm trying to say here. You can follow what I'm trying to say. So in the end, we're just out teched. The Twitch was the difference between the two. Dior played with his life multiple times, finally assassinated, and his death meant the end of the hopes for Everett. One final chance for both of these teams as we get ready to go to a quick break. Game three all comes down to this BBQ desperately needing these wins to try to claw their way out of 10th place. Everett seeking to climb the standings towards a middle of the pack spot, fifth and sixth in their sights. But they need this win in game three. BBQ still no wins on red side. Let's see if they can pick one up to close out this series. We're gonna go to that break. When we come back, we'll have the conclusion. BBQ versus Ever 8.